And then you have certain women who complain that, what do I do? Because my spouse is just not religious or practicing enough. This is probably the most common issue that comes up. Probably the most common complaint that women have about their husbands is, what do I do? My husband isn't religious. How do I draw him closer to Allah? And I'll tell you what doesn't work. Nagging doesn't work. 100%. It doesn't work at all. And I think it's really important to somehow be able to get yourself in the mindset of accepting and submitting to the fact that even if, inshallah, if you really love your husband and want the best for him, at the end of the day, you are two separate souls. You have two separate journeys and you're going to move at two separate paces. You're not going to necessarily be going at the same speed. And the number one piece of advice I once heard given by a sheikh to the wife was get up at the hajjid and beg Allah to give you a husband to make your husband be somebody who's beloved to him and to give you this husband to transform your husband into this person as a gift to you and you're getting up at the in the last third of the night when the rest of the world is asleep and you're begging your lord for what you need and what you want and inshallah, he'll give it to you as a gift, inshallah. And if he doesn't, you have to remind yourself and you have to submit to the fact that he has his own journey and he has his own relationship with his Lord. And it's not something you can micromanage. It's not something you can control. You can't get the outcomes that you want. We can't even, we can't even do it with our children, let alone our spouses. And if we think about our own relationship with Allah, nobody can force us to be closer to Allah if we're not feeling it, right? And so how can we do that to a grown adult? So the best thing you can do is, is beg Allah for what you want and, and use that need, that void that you have in your life that your spouse isn't religious. Use that as an opportunity to draw even closer to Allah yourself. I do want to share something. So a very uh -huh. dear friend of mine who has recently passed, Rahimahullah, she was so devout. Like she would wake up with tahajjud every morning, stay up until the sun came up, you know, then do duha and her nawafil, read Quran every day, study, teach. Somebody who was just extremely religious. I, I swear that she must be a saint. She, You know, I know she's, she's a saint really. The thing is that her husband was not at all like that at all uh -huh. and I said but doesn't it bother you when he doesn't wake up for Fajr and she said you know Sumayat it used to really bother me but with all of her self-development and growth she just dropped all expectations completely and she focuses she focused on all of his good qualities and she celebrated they had a very beautiful relationship uh -huh. but she was so self-assured and she said, now when I wake up for Fajr, it doesn't bother me. And it's not like, oh, let me wake up so I can demonstrate yeah. what Muslim I am, so I can teach him what it's like to yeah. be, you know, that under thing. She yeah. just let go all expectations. And she said, I am genuinely grateful for my husband. Like, he uh -huh. is beautiful. And it just really, really astounded me because I feel like it really takes some kind of self-assurance, like some kind of confidence, confidence in yourself, confidence with your Lord, to not have that that need uh, from a spouse. Yeah. It really stuck with me. Yeah, just wanted to share that. Yeah, subhanAllah, that, that's beautiful. You know, I'll share that um, when my husband and I got married, neither of us were really that religious. And then at one point, I really started wanting to grow spiritually and to learn more and to practice more. And my husband was a little baffled by what was going on with me. Um, it wasn't his thing necessarily at that time. He didn't stop me, but he wasn't necessarily joining me on it. The only thing he did ob object to was when I, I started wearing the hijab, like he had a hard time with that. Um, so the first time I brought it up, I I let it go. But then the second time I, I decided I'm wearing the hijab with or without his permission, he didn't stop me at that point. And you know, a little while ago, 
but he's a, a completely different person now, mashallah. He's much more pious, much more practicing, much more spiritual than I am. He inspires me in so many ways, mashallah. And 30 years ago, I could never have predicted the changes that I would that I would be blessed to be able to witness in him. However, I he was interviewed for a podcast and the interviewer asked him, you know, what was it that that caused you to change when you and your wife were on, on such different pages at that time? And I didn't know what it was that happened for him, but I was really fascinated with his response because what he told the interviewer was, he said, my wife was gentle with me and she didn't nag me, but she loved practicing the deen herself. And I saw that Islam worked. Like I saw the contentment and the peace and the good, the good way of living and the good life that the deen gives you. And it, and he said, the attitude of my spouse was kind of like, Hey, I want you over here with me. Cause this is a good place to be, you know, not you have to come here. You know, you're going to, you're going to burn in hell if you don't. Like, it wasn't that kind of attitude. It was more like, this is so beautiful. You, you've got to experience this, you know, mashallah. So Alhamdulillah, ultimately, ultimately, it's it's a it's a mercy of Allah. It's a blessing from him. It's one of many blessings. And if you end up being blessed with a spouse who's a believer and practices and has an Islamic way of thinking, you'll you'll benefit in many ways. And inshallah, it's something to ask your Lord for. And it's something to develop your own relationship with Allah about by asking for what you need. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you say to a lady who says, you know, this is man who wants to marry me, I think he's really lovely, he is not stopping me from practicing, but he is not really practicing himself. Yeah, that's interesting, because that that was my situation. And sometimes I think, if somebody were to come to me today and give me a description of what my husband was 30 years ago, and say, I'm thinking of marrying this guy, I I think my knee jerk reaction would be run the other way. Like, you know, he's not pious enough or he's not practicing enough. I, I think what my situation has shown me that is that ultimately marriage is a gamble. Um, it is our parents duas that help us uh, really, really rely on your parents to pray for you. Inshallah, those of us who are blessed with parents. Um, but the key, key thing, well, one thing I'll tell you that a female scholar told me and it always stuck with me. She said, Many times I have women come to me and they say, I have these two proposals, two men who are, you know, asking for my hand. And I don't know why it has to be so binary, but honestly, th these are the situations she's seen. And she said, you know, on one hand, I've got a guy who practice, you know, prays five times a day and is pious and has a long beard and goes to the masjid and has a misbaha in his hand all the time. And, you know, it's, I'm really inspired by how he practices his deen, but he's, he's really short tempered. And, um, he doesn't really help around the house that much and he's not that considerate. And on the other hand, I have this guy who he's really nice to my parents and he's good with children and he's, he's kind and he asks me, you know, what he can do to help, but he's not very practicing. He's, he's, he's not, you know, he doesn't really know his fiqh. What do I do? And the female scholar said that I believe it or not, I tell them to go for the one who's not that religious. She said, because you can't fix mean. You can't fix mean. So if you're seeing red flags or even yellow flags that show bad character traits, that show that a person is mean, angry, short-tempered, rude, you know, lazy, unhelpful, those are those are major uh, character traits, you know, that that major flaws to think about that. And and you should assume you should assume the person's not going to change. The person you're considering for marriage, you should take them where they're at right then. You shouldn't think I can fix them. I can make them better. And same with religiosity. If a person isn't praying, don't assume I'm going to turn them into a religious person. I'm going to get them praying. The question I asked my husband when he was courting me, uh, and you know, he wasn't my husband at the time. The question I asked him is what role does Islam play in your life? And he said, not a big one, but I'm looking for those influences in my life again. And that's why I'm considering a Muslim woman. And at that point, 
I had my doubts, but it was actually my parents and my brother who were like, no, we like this guy. He's a good person and he's not fake and he's sincere and he's not hiding who he is. And you, you need to give him a chance, you know? So that's why also Shura is very important. You know, people who know you and um, can can see what's good for you based on what they know about you. Yes, so. mashallah. I mean, you're so blessed, mashallah. I must add, though, that we, to just reiterate that marriage is a risk. You can go for premarital counseling, get your parents involved, ask all the right questions. The person might have very lofty niyat about how he wants to progress in his life, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end of the day, it still might not work out. And that's the whole thing is that you just Absolutely. don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> exactly. You don't know what you're going to get. And also, Samaya, you don't know, God forbid, you don't know what trial or tribulation is going to come your way that's going to send shockwaves through your marriage that you didn't see coming. Like maybe everything was fine in your marriage and everything was going perfectly, but then a sibling gets divorced or a parent gets sick or somebody loses a job and now there's financial issues or there's infertility issues or a child has major scandal in the community. You don't know what kind of test or trial might come your way that's going to shake up your marriage, God forbid, right? Uh, you, you might have a child born with special needs and before you had these challenges in your life, you and your husband were fine. But the second some a challenge like that came up, all of a sudden you're seeing a different side of each other. So you, you pray that you can weather all the storms together, inshallah, and that the best in you is going to come out. But you're right, marriage is a gamble. And the person you're marrying right now may not be the same person 30 years from now. You know, there's, you just, the prayer is that you grow together and that, you're happy with the growth you see in each other and that you help each other become better people. So many people say, oh, don't let marriage change you. You know, when friends are getting married, don't let marriage change you. But no, marriage should change you, but it should change you for the better, inshallah. So you want to look for that, that inshallah, we're helping each other be better people. Mm -hmm.